Hello everyone and welcome to the second installment of the TDE Academy. We will be talking today about remote cloning and upgrading encrypted PDBs and after a short PowerPoint presentation I will also show you a live demo on how to upgrade a 12.2 PDB to a 19.70 DB all with encrypted table spaces. Hi, my name is Peter Wall. I'm the product manager here in the database security group responsible for encryption and key management. Now, this is our safe harbor statement that you please read to make sure that you don't make any purchasing decision based on what you hear and learn today. So, this workshop. First, we will define the goal of this workshop and I will give you a quick update of TDE and also will call out extra patches that I needed to make this work. Then steps two, three, four, and five are already the live demo. So in the first part, we will review the TDE setup of the source database and prepare that database for cloning. In the next part, we review the TDE setup of the destination database and prepare that one for cloning. Then in step four, we will clone the PDB with encrypted table spaces from 12.2 container to a 19.7 container, which has already, which is also encrypted. And then we will upgrade the PDB from 12.201 to 19.7, always keeping an eye on the master encryption keys, on the encrypted table spaces, and to make sure everything is working as expected. So the goal of this workshop is to enable DBAs to successfully complete upcoming upgrade projects with encrypted databases. Oracle Database 12.2 will run out of support by the end of this year with only limited continuing support. Oracle Database 19, however, is the long-term release and will be with us until March 2026. The correct steps in the correct sequence can make a big difference between success and failure because in TDE we have only very limited let me try this again attempts. Both the source and the destination database are two node rack databases with shared auto open wallets in ASM. The TDE setup of the destination database is based on static and dynamic system parameters and the source database the 12.2 still uses the traditional TDE setup with an extra parameter that allows us to hide the wallet password from the SQL plus command line. So how do the new and the old TDE setup uh, mechanisms compare? On the left side, we see the old setup. On the right side, we see the new setup. So the first case on the left side gives us um, a file-based TDE setup with a wallet. Right? Method equals file, and then a directory points to the directory where the wallet is stored. We should do the same thing on an uh, on an 18C or 19C database wallet root and TDE configuration take over or replace the directory and method statements in on the left side. Now if you would like to have a password protected connection into OKV, the left side is clear, method equals OKV, and then on the right side we see that we set wallet root and the TDE configuration is OKV. Now, if we have an auto open OKV, we need method equals OKV and a directory that points us to the wallet that contains the password into OKV. You would use wallet root and TDE configuration where we move from right to left. So we move from file to OKV. You would use that setting also when you migrate from a wallet based TDE setup into OKV. You would also set the TDE configuration through to OKV pipe file. And afterwards, if you like to keep an auto open connection into OKV, you would leave it that way. Um, in, in the older database releases, the OKV client installation um, happens without the database knowing about it. So the database needs some link into the OKV client installation. And this is done by a symbolic link. That symbolic link points to the configuration file um, okvclient.ora in the installation directory. So that is how the database finds the information that it needs to talk to OKV. On the right side, if the directories under wallet root are written exactly the way that they are here, slash TDE, slash OKV, and slash TDE underscore SCPS in lowercase, 
then the Oracle database will find what it needs automatically. Um, in 12.2, we introduced a static system parameter external key store credential location, which can point to any directory to store an auto open wallet which contains the OKV password, which then allows us to hide the OKV password or the wallet password, depending on how your configuration looks like, and replace that password with a string called external store. And if you put this wallet into wallet root slash TDE SCPS, you don't need that system parameter. What about patches? On both the source and the destination side are installed patch 30, 39, 80, 99, which allows me to change the database default algorithm from AES128, which was hard coded until then, to AES192 or AES256, which I have used in my live demo. Um, that change applies to all the table spaces that are encrypted forcefully when you use the encrypt new table spaces parameter and set that to always. Also on the destination side, I, insta I installed patch 29469563, which is mandatory to enable PDB cloning via database links. Then there is a parameter called one step plugging for PDB with TDE. Now that parameter has only very limited use cases. It can only be used to clone PDBs via database links and you don't have to provide the wallet password of the destination wallet. Now that has been superseded by replacing the wallet password with the string external store that I mentioned earlier and that is applicable to many more TDE commands. So how do we do the cloning? So first we create a user on the source database with the proper privileges to allow remote cloning. Then on the target database we create a database link that points to the source database and logs into the user account that we created in step number one. Then we clone the PDB. When this PDB is 12.2 or later, then the PDB keys are automatically copied into the target wallet. So there is no need for you to export keys or copy them over and import them into the target wallet. That is not needed for source databases 12.2, 18 and 19. Then we upgrade and we confirm that everything is correct and then we rekey the upgraded pluggable databases so that it uses its own key because the keys are copied from the source to the destination database. Our upgraded PDB still uses that same key that it used while it was still in the old container so we would like to give that database a new key. Okay, so here we see the 12.2 database and at first we verify that all the patches that I mentioned earlier are installed. The TDE setup still based on sql.aura with, with file and the directory. Let's look into this directory. We see the existing wallets and if we go into the TDE SCPS directory we see the auto open wallet which allows us to replace the password with external store. Now how does the database find this? it finds this wallet by setting the external key store credential location parameter. We have a PDB which, with has, which has two encrypted table spaces and we have a, um, a table in the encrypted table space called protected and we can select from the encrypted table no problem. That works just as advertised and um, the next step, in order to clone a live PDB, we, uh, the archive log needs to be turned on and local undo tablespaces need to be enabled. Here we look into the wallet of our source database and we see that the PDB has two different keys. So there was one set key and one wiki operation. Now we create a user that allows us to do remote cloning and here we look at the 19C database. Again, we confirm that all the patches that we need are there. And now we look at the TDE setup. So here we have the TDE configuration points to file because we use a wallet. 
and then bullet root points to an ASM directory which is shared between the two instances of my rack database. And look at this, we only see two directories, right? This is wallet root slash TDE that contains the TDE wallet and wallet root slash TDE SEPS contains the auto open wallet that allows us to hide the wallet password from the secret plus command line. So here we see that this container database already has an encrypted PDB. Now we create our database link into the source database and we clone, oh, we look into the wallet um, again and we see that root and PDB have one key. So now we created the pluggable database and we see that our two keys from the old, from the original database have been copied over into the wallet of the target database. So now we open the incoming PDB in upgrade mode and we upgrade. This is only one command that does everything. It runs for 56 minutes and then after this has finished we can open our pluggable database and set the PDB to auto open. And now we can set a tagged key and also note that we never used the wallet password, we always used external store. Here we always want PDB keys to have a tag so that we can afterwards easier identify them. And now we recompile the database the PDB that also takes roughly 10 minutes. So. Confirm that our database has been upgraded. Encrypt the system and sysaux table spaces of our incoming PDB. And we select from our sample table that is in the encrypted table space. And we take an inventory and we see that our TERF2 PDB is now fully encrypted and upgraded to a 19C PDB. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little live demo. Join my network on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, bye bye.